Good morning, everybody. Welcome to this morning's uh, Daily Dose. Hello, Daily Dosers. It's Tinker Like It's Thursday. Lovely to see you all. Thank you for joining me, and I hope you enjoyed yesterday's uh, activities after the Daily Dose, making lots of noise. I've seen the videos, I've seen the pictures that you've been sending in. I'm going to get to the showcase blog in a minute and share those. So I know that there were lots of musical instruments made uh, using the... Oh, I'm just going to reduce that a little bit. There we go. Using the uh, idea of filling glasses with different amounts of liquid, hitting them, creating these lovely tones. We've even got somebody on the showcase blog that managed to recreate uh, a famous nursery rhyme with their musical instruments. Well done to them. So, usual format of this morning's Daily Dose. We're going to jump onto the showcase blog. I've got a few names to shout out on the register, including um, a couple of pets, I think, even, that got their, snuck their names on there as well. But let me uh, start with a few announcements. A few announcements. Um, so, first of all, just to say that tomorrow's Daily Dose will be the last Daily Dose. I'm going to take a two-week break as we're all taking a holiday. Some of you might have been on holiday this past week and next week. My school's holiday is starting tomorrow, running through for two weeks. So I'm going to take a break from the Daily Dose during that time. Tomorrow is actually, of course, Good Friday. So lots of people will be on holiday anyway. So it might be that we don't get as many people watching. I don't want you hassling your mum and dad if you want to do the activities for tomorrow You've in, and they're saying it's holiday time. Take a break, catch up on it at another time. But having said that, we have got a really, really cool daily dose tomorrow all around cyber security. I've done an interview uh, with someone that works, Jenny, who works at the BBC in their cyber security department. Fascinating stuff. So it is a really good episode, but only tune in if you're still doing some home learning, catch up at another time if you are not. Also, reminder, please do subscribe on the website so that in two weeks' time, when I get together a load more ideas, people have been sending me ideas, including you watching, um, then when I send those out, you will be up to date on everything that we've got coming uh, when, when we start back again. So please do subscribe. Also, the end of today, I'm going to share some answers to questions that you sent in to Ed, our specialist, our um, specialist scientist, expert scientist who's been talking a little bit about the COVID virus, had a, a couple of really good questions that came in and I put them to him. He's responded, so I'm going to share those with you. And also, I wanted to say thank you. Thank you to everyone that's been tuning in over the last three weeks. It's been wonderful to receive all of the pictures of what you've been doing at home. There's particularly some real regulars that have been tuning in. Every day I've been getting sent, in, sent stuff and it's really heartening uh, to see that, to know that people have been trying out these ideas at home. So thank you. Um, so let's jump onto the showcase blog. Okay, here we go. Let's switch to that one there. I'll come and sit myself down here. And oh, I'm tripping over the wires that I've got set up here. Okay, so super sounds from yesterday. First up, page. Very well done, page. Uh, we've got a video here. Hoping that you can hear the sounds on this video. But we've got page here who is testing out her uh, sound, the sounds that the different um, amounts of water make when she's hitting them, uh, and she's got the oscilloscope running there as well. Um, I just need to... I'm concerned that you're not going to be able to hear this, so I'm just going to check whether you can. I think... Ooh. Right, i tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to... time there we go right we're back okay so uh i know now that you're going to be able to hear me i'm going through the microphone on my laptop we're back when i come to actually plug 
my other mic back in, there will be a pause in sound again. So let's just go for that one again in case you didn't hear it from Paige. Excellent. And you can hear the different pitches in those. So we've got high pitch, medium pitch, and low pitch as well. Excellent. Well done to you, Paige. Now this, this is this is the one. This is the nursery rhyme. I, I'll let you have a guess. See if you can guess it. I think I know what it is. Let's go for this one here. You actually, so this is Lily and Sophie, we've actually tuned them, I think, to notes pretty much. And I think, I think that's Mary Had a Little Lamb, but I might be wrong and I hope I'm not. And if I am, I'm sorry, please let me know. But it's a fantastic effort uh, from everyone there yesterday. The Welsh boys, I, I don't, on this, the email started with my ears hurt and I hit my finger. Now, I don't know if that's coming from one of the boys or from mum, but that to me... Sounds like you've had a good day's experiment in if your ears hurt and you've hit your finger. So, um, and well done to you. Um, the, the glass and water experiment had the boys working out a number of different experiments. So they've tried different levels of water, different glasses, holding the glass, tipping more water in, taking water out. Excellent. So let's have a look at a couple of their videos here. There you go, and you can see some of the rice vibrating there, and we've got... Excellent, love the rhythm to that one. Then we've got some Crab Lane and Crumpsall Lane students here. Look at that, lovely. Um, and this one as well. Oh, we're stuttering. Excellent. And I think it was Mrs. Owens that was working with them yesterday. So thank you to Mrs. Owens. Uh, Willow and Violet, um, your mum, your email made me laugh about the fact that um, they'd sort of gone off on a little bit of a tangent and done their own thing and started putting cereal and rice in different containers and shaking them, which is absolutely brilliant uh, because I know that we are, th I mean, this, this year uh, is is it year, where do they do sound now? They used to do it in year five, but I know your children are a bit younger than that. So it's wonderful to see that they've still been able to engage in this. That's a bit loud. And did you oh, hear? And I'm just wondering how long that went on for there, the banging. But excellent. I think that might be Willow there. Um, great scientific vocabulary talking about have I have to hit it hard. Um, oh, no, sorry. She said I have to do it loud. So she's getting the understanding of the vocabulary describing the sound. We've got Harris and Issa here. Take it away, boys. And you can really see the rice moving on there. Excellent effort. And I love the thumbs up. We've got some playing of the glasses. An excellent turn taking there, boys, as well. One of you did one experiment for the video. The other one did the other. Jess, one of our regulars. Here we go. Take it away, Jess. Signature thumbs up. Love it. And I think we get a particular sound. I, I spy a large uh, gin glass there, which gives a particularly good sound. Like that one. Albie in, from Bristol and Penny the cat as well there. That was the first cat getting a men Sorry, first pet getting a mention today. They're tuned in. Mum said you were mesmerised by the experiment, which is wonderful to hear. 
and Hassan as well. There's pictures coming in from Hassan. Um, and five, last but not least, a couple more Crumpsall Lane students. Uh, first of all, Sammy. Look at that. You can see the rice move there. Now, Sammy's also on this one. Uh, managed to get the note to kind of warble like I did where you hit the glass and then you tip the glass and you can actually hear the change in pitch of the notes. Let's have a, have a listen to this one. Here we go. There we go, and a yes! Did you hear that note change sound? Uh, so very well done to everyone there. Um, and let me just think, is there any more sound I want to play, or can I go back to my other mic? No, there isn't. Um, so I'm going to go back to my other mic now. So what's going to happen is it's going to go quiet uh, just for sort of 10 seconds or so as it detects me plugging in this other mic, and then it should go back to regular sound. So just give me a second or 10 Can you hear me? Oh, there we go. I think you can hear me. Right, okay. So, well done to everyone that did those experiments from yesterday. Sent them in, got them on the blog. A few other mentions for the register as well. Good morning, Adam, Adam and Jessica and Stanley. There's our second pet mention of this morning. Stanley is their dog. Um, and I'm not sure if he's he is tuning in as well, but hello. Um, also, hello to Miss Parks. Uh, Miss Parks works at Crumpsall Lane Primary School and she sent me an email yesterday as did a couple of other people just to answer my question on the speed of sound because I really should have been able to remember this. It's 343 metres per second. So I think I was close there. She also asked me a question because she said that um, she did the Miss Parks did the experiment with the bread um, going mouldy but it didn't quite work out and she wondered whether or not um, it was to do with by having bicarbonate of soda in. I'm, I'll be totally honest, I'm not too sure. But what I was surprised to learn is that you sacrificed two of your home-baked scones for that science experiment. For anyone that doesn't know, Miss Parks is probably, uh, yeah, probably the best baker I have ever encountered. Makes incredible treats for us um, on occasion at Crumpsall Lane, and I'm surprised to hear that you sacrificed two scones, but thank you for getting involved. Um, also, thank you for Sammy, he sent in his bread pictures. We've got the following students uh, tuning in this morning with Miss Fairclough from our combined schools, Crumpsall and Crab Lane. We've got Harley, uh, we've got Elise, We've got Ryan. Hey, Ryan, hope you're well. We've got Rocco, we've got Erin, we've got Huntley, and we've got Bobby. I know that they're taking part this morning, so hello to you. And last, but by no means least, Usman. Yesterday, when I went through the work from the day before on our hand drive routines, I said to Usman that I think he had pinched his off the internet, and it was a um, the steps for the Macarena and I challenged Usman to send in a picture sorry a video of him doing the Macarena and he has would you like to see it oh I can hear you all shouting yes so let's go quickly back to the showcase blog ah uh, to the Macarena as performed here we go by Usman Make sure you're all watching because he only does one iteration. Here it comes. Absolutely wonderful. Well done, husband. Um, lots of house points coming to you if we get back to school uh, this year. 
um, but very well done nonetheless. Right, okay, let's make a start today then. Uh, lava lamps. Now, I'm going to show you two different ways to make lava lamps today. Um, remember, this is Tinker Like It's Thursday, so it's all about exploring things. Uh, these look really cool. The things that you need today are um, basically like some clear containers, so glass jars, or I know at the school they're using plastic bottles. That's fine as well. I've got two here just so I can show you the two different methods. Um, then you need some oil. You need the oil for both methods. It can be uh, any vegetable oil or I've got rapeseed oil here. Prob don't use your mum and dad's best quality extra virgin olive oil that's really expensive without asking them. Um, you then need some food colouring. Uh, so I've gone for a nice natural pink. Uh, sorry, I think it's natural colouring as opposed to the colour being natural pink. But we've got pink. Um, and then randomly, I don't know why I bought some black food colouring. That's not very good, is it? Um, in fact, I don't think they had many much food colouring. That's why I went for black initially. So then we've got two uh, options here then. You can either make it with... Uh, we need, sorry, we need water as well. Got me Pim's jug of water. And then you either need an Alka-Seltzer tablet, which your mum and dad might have, um, and you need to speak to them um, about using these, okay? You shouldn't be taking any medicines or anything like that without speaking to them ever, okay? So make sure you've spoken to them if you're using that. Um, or the other option is you get some bicarbonate of soda and some vinegar. Okay, that's the other option. Uh, so I'm going to do the Alka-Seltzer. Which option should we do first? I'll tell you what. No, we'll do the bicarb and soda one because I haven't tested that one yet. So that could be a surprise whether or not it works. Um, so the first thing that you need to do for either options is start off by pouring some water into the glass okay and you only want about a third oh by the way this is probably one actually where watch me do it then you do it because there's you want to enjoy it. you don't want to rush it you want to watch it go off properly so maybe watch me do it and then and then you do it afterwards whatever works for you so here we go on the first one i'm going to Pour in about a third of water. Now, hopefully, let's get my dual camera set up. Here we go. Let me just change that so I can see what you're seeing. There we go. Yeah, okay. That's about right. Let's move that up like that. There we go. Okay. So there we go. We've got, um, that's probably, yeah, about a third. I might tip a little bit of that out like so then what we're going to do uh next is we're going to add in oil okay now just before we do this i want you to have a think what's going to happen when i add the oil and why do you think that's going to happen are we going to get this oily watery mix or is something else going to happen just to talk to the person that you, anyone that's with you or a pet if there's no one with you what do you think is going to happen Okay, so you've had a bit of a think. Let's find out if you are right or wrong. Remember, it doesn't matter. It's just all about having a bit of a think. So I'm going to pour my oil in. Now, you want quite a bit of oil. In it goes. So going to pretty much fill, not the rest of it up, because that's going to use a ridiculous amount of oil, but it's more oil than water. There we go. Now, really interesting. Look, if we look closely... What has happened here? Have they mixed? No, they haven't. Okay, the oil is actually sitting on top of the water there. And the reason for that is that the water is heavier. Water is denser than oil. So it uh, sits at the bottom and the oil sits on top of it. And even if we take something to mix it up, Let's go with this spoon for the second. Is this going to cause me a problem before I do it and then think? Yes, it might. So let's use instead. Uh, hang on. I'm going. 
out a short second just to get to another spoon or mixer. Here we go. Get one from my oh, sink. Uh, if even if I mix this up a, up a bit, and I'm not going to mix it up loads because it takes a while to then separate again. But look, even when you mix it up, oh, it does it quite quickly. Look, mix it up, take your spoon out, and it all separates again. Okay, because the fluids, the two different uh, liquids there are of different densities. Okay, and I should really have thought about getting uh, some kind of cloth on here, but it's all right, we'll use a bit of paper, okay, like so. So, that's the first step, okay, in making a lava lamp. Next step is to take your food colouring of choice, I'm going to go for pink, and we're going to drop a few drops of food colouring into the top of our glass and what you'll see this is really cool love this okay is that the food coloring is gonna it's not gonna mix with the oil um it's gonna drop down through the oil and when it gets to the water it's gonna mix with the water all right in theory so here we go a few drops oh went quite quick that did you see it okay and look look how cool it looks when it gets down into the water here it doesn't mix with the oil, but when it gets to the water, okay, just give it a little nudge, okay, can you see it dropping down through the oil and not mixing, and then if I just place this spoon in again, and give it a little bit of a, there we go, we burst those bubbles of colour, and now we have this lovely vibrant colour at the bottom there okay um so oh i said i was gonna do the bicarb one first didn't i but this isn't actually this is the alka the one okay so for those doesn't matter for those of you that are doing bicarb we'll do that in a second this one is and if you oh if you've got bicarb and you've done this no, let's carry on with this as the bicarb because I don't want to confuse everyone because I'm confusing me. Okay, so this is the bicarb one. All right. Now what we're going to do in uh, is using another glass, we are going to mix up. I've, I've done this wrong a little bit, but it's all right. I'm coming back. I'm coming back from it. Um, we're going to take some bicarbonate. Okay, and we are going to... Uh, mix it with some water okay so you need some bicarbonate of soda and you need to mix it with a little bit of water okay and give it a good stir okay good stir. now you might not be able so you can see this it's looking like a cloudy solution okay and uh, now you might not be able to get it all to dissolve uh, because what happens is you end up with and year five should know this or year six now, because we did this in year five, you end up with something called a saturated solution where you can't dissolve any more of the solute, which here is the bicarbonate of soda, in the solvent, which here is water. Okay. Uh, and then what you need to do is you pour that mix in as well. Okay. And it will go right the way down through the oil and into the bottom. So now what we have in the bottom there is a mixture of water and bicarbonate of soda. And then to set this off, okay, hmm, do I want a bit more bicarbonate of soda there? Because there's been a lot less left over. Let's try and pour it all in, okay? Now to set this lava lamp off, because it's ready to go now, all right, I want to make sure you get a good view of this when it goes. Okay, so I'm going to do that, and then I'm also going to move it that way, so it's not... And let me just do a little bit of editing here on the fly to make me a bit out of the way. Yeah, cool. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to pour some vinegar next into our lava lamp and the vinegar is going to go right the way down through the oil and then it's going to hit the water that's got all that bicarbonate of soda in does anybody know what happens 
when you mix vinegar and bicarbonate of soda? Does anyone know? Letting you think, letting you speak out loud, okay, because also I can't hear you. But does anyone know? Okay. Ah, I think someone said it. Yes, it produces a gas. It does. It produces a gas called carbon dioxide. So hopefully, and do you know what? Just to make sure, I'm going to put a bit more bicarbonate of soda in. Okay, let's get, because I haven't tested this before, and I want to make sure that it works. So we're going to get a little bit more bicarb. Okay, we're going to get a little bit more water uh, and mix it. Not too much more water, because the more water I put in there, the more diluted it's going to be. But we're going to pour that in as well. Okay, remember, you can play around with this. You can tinker with this today to find out the best combination of mixtures um, but yes when we pour this vinegar in hopefully the vinegar is going to drop all the way down into the water it's got the bicarbonate of soda in it's going to react with the bicarbonate of soda it's going to produce gas that gas is going to bubble up through the uh, oil and it's going to create this lava lamp style effect where we see all the color it's going to take the color with it as well the red color uh, and it's going to look really cool I'm saying this and I hope it works fingers crossed everyone okay so let's give it a go open our vinegar and we're going to pour a little bit in oh we can see it starting to happen. Can you see? Here we go. Hang on, we need a little bit more, but we are getting a stream of bubbles starting. Let's get a little bit more in. Okay. Oh, we've got a good stream in the middle there. Okay, let's give it a little bit of a mix. Encourage the reaction to take place. Here we go. There we go. It just needed a bit of a mix to get it started. Okay, let's give it another mix. Look at that. Doesn't that look fab? Can you, oh, it's really going now. Okay, can you see it's taking the colour up in the little bubbles all the way up into the top um, section in the oil. Okay, let's just move it around. Let's, I'm trying to make sure you can see as much as possible there. Okay. And I think we could probably get it going even more by, let's we try a bit more bicarb, I reckon. So let's go for a little bit more bicarb in here, a little bit of water. Now, I think to make this even better, tips for you if you're doing it today, I think I might have used a bit too much water in the bottom here. But let's try, we pour a bit more bicarb in and then... There we go. Look at that. Oh, look at that go now. Okay, did you see that? So you can actually reactivate it um, by adding more bicarbonate of soda in. Or oh, I'm running out a little bit of room in the glass here, tipping a little bit more. Whoa, look at that go. How cool is that? Okay, it's a lovely, lovely experiment, this one. Be careful, it can get a bit messy. Um, if uh, you start getting your, your fingers too covered in oil, etc. So that's that's the first way to do it. That's for the bicarbonate of soda gang today. Then for the uh, Alka-Seltzer gang, it's even easier. All right, so uh, I need to get rid of this, the baking soda out of this. Give me one second. Here we go. Da, da, da. Right, I'm back, I'm coming. Okay, so that was the bicarb of soda way of doing it. And it's still going actually in the background here. It looks really, really cool. Um, Alka-Seltzer, even easier. Let's just make sure you can see what I'm doing again. Okay. Uh, with the Alka-Seltzer, there we go, perfect. Pour some water in, okay, step one is the same. Uh, yeah, I think I did too much last time, so word of advice, a little bit less actually. I'm going to go for like that, okay. Can you see there, about that, yeah. Then, 
You get your food colouring in, in the same way. No, you don't. Let's put the oil in first, because then it's really cool. You can see that it doesn't matter if you put your food colouring in first, but if we get the oil in first, then you can see the food colouring going down through the oil. There we go. Notice again how cool that separation is between the oil and the water, and so we don't get that mixing. Um, because of the difference in densities. Then we pour a little bit of food colouring in. See that drop right the way through down to the bottom? Oh, how cool is that? There we go, looking ace. And then with the Alka-Seltzer one, all you have to do is take your Alka-Seltzer. So what happens, when this hits water, it fizzes and produces gas itself. So this is going to do... Just whereas the vinegar and the soda produced that carbon dioxide and that then bubbled up through and created our lava lamp, here um, the Alka-Seltzer actually fizzes and produces a gas and that's going to do the same. Now to really get the effect on this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get it a bit darker in here and I'm going to actually make it as a lava lamp by having light come up through it. So on this side I'm going to close my curtains like so. And then I'm going to turn my lights off, like so. Okay. I've also... That noise, I'm quite lucky. I've got a little cinema screen in there, which I've pulled down to try and blank out. And I'm going to pull the blind down over here in the kitchen. So it's not going to be super dark. Um, but then what you have to do... Is you get your phone or your parents' phone, ask permission first, and you pop the torch on, like so, and then we place that down and place the glass over it, like that, okay? Hopefully, without it falling over and pouring everywhere, okay? Like so, let's have a go at this. Yes! Okay, this is looking really like a lava lamp. That's me. Make me smaller, because you don't need to see me so much. Okay, and now, here we go. And you can do this, you can do this light thing with the other one as well. I just wanted to wait until the end as a finale. We're going to take uh, Alka-Seltzer, we're going to break it up into lots of little pieces, and we're going to drop it in, and when it hits the bottom, it's going to react, and here it goes. Can you see our lovely lava lamp, the blobs of colour taking for Look at that! Isn't it brilliant? It looks lovely! And you can see, if I zoom in, you can see it going up. Let me turn the light off on that. Look at that! Ta-da! La Homemade lava lamps. One of my favourite experiments, just because they visually look so cool. Just look at that. So, today, go and give this a go. Um, try as well, if you want, different amounts of water or oil and different colours. You know, tinker with it. That's the whole thing here. It's about, look at that, that's brilliant, isn't it? That's a good one. Okay, um, yeah, tinker with it, explore. As I, um, I know some of you are doing it in a plastic bottle, then you can kind of keep it as your sort of lamp a little bit if you've got a torch to go under it as well. Um, but yeah, it's a really, really fun experiment. So uh, let's just get a little bit of light back in here. There we go. Okay, I'm back. Uh, is that still going? It is. Look at that. That was a good one, actually. Really, really good one. Um, okay, so let's go just a second back to this screen here so I can tell you about, or uh, remind you, last session tomorrow. But I know that some of you might not be able to tune in because it is Good Friday, but it's a great session on cybersecurity. That's coming up tomorrow. And then, finally, just to say today, a couple of questions which I have put to our expert, Ed, that you sent in brilliant questions about COVID. The first was this, um, and I think this came from Bertie. It did. Um, why is it called COVID-19? Have there been 18 previous COVIDs? 
And if it happens again, will it be COVID-20? Great question, Bertie. Thank you for sending that in. I put this to Ed and he explained to me, and I've got his responses here, that it's called COVID-19 because it's named after the year that it was discovered, seen as occurring in. So it started in Wuhan in China in December 19, 2019, and that was what um, caused it to be named COVID-19. So there we go. Thank you for sending in that question. Uh, this other question, and I'm, oh, I haven't written down who sent this in, so I'm really sorry, but it was a great question. So they said, and let me know if it was you, I was wondering if, if coronavirus is so delicate that the capsid can be destroyed by soap, why, uh, why can't they treat patients with something similar that will destroy the fatty acids, that was the capsid bit, around the, the virus once it's inside the body? And Ed said as well, both these are fantastic questions. So um, Ed was explaining to me in his response that actually, um, whilst it's very safe to use soap on your hands, if you use something like soap inside the body, in your bloodstream, that can actually make you very ill, just in the same way the virus is making could make you ill. That would actually be quite potentially quite harmful to you and make you ill. Um, so that's one reason. And then the other point he said that actually, um, when we're looking at how we treat viruses when they're inside the body, we don't really want to break down the capsid because if you break down the capsid once it's inside your body, that then releases that um, DNA and RDA um, into the cells in the body. So it's fine to use that approach when it's on, out, on the outside of the body using soap, but that's not really the way we want to tackle it once it's inside the body because we don't want it releasing its DNA into the cells. So again, amazing question. So thank you. So apologies, whoever that was. Um, please let me know um, but that was super so have a great day send in your pictures of your lava lamps I'll get them on the showcase blog Usman keep doing the Macarena I may or may not see you tomorrow if I don't have a fantastic long Easter weekend have a fantastic Easter holiday keep an eye out for the episodes coming at the end uh, of the holiday for when we start back if I am going to see you tomorrow awesome uh, it really interesting episode on cybersecurity. I'll see you at 10 o'clock, bright and early tomorrow. It's not very early, but bright tomorrow morning. Bye now.